Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Jim Hoffman here. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church. It is about 12, 18 or so in the afternoon. I apologize. I'm about 18 minutes later than what I anticipated. Our annual conference session was supposed to be over at noon, but these things run a little bit longer than what they uh, actually say they're going to. So, But we're on live now for our devotion time. It's Saturday morning uh, or Saturday afternoon, August the the 22nd. And so I'll take a minute to just wait for folks to join me here real quick, and then we'll get started with our devotion time. So... Answering a quick text. My apologies. Okay, we're going to get started with our devotion time. We're going to be reading out of Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 to 25. And here is what Paul wrote in his letter. He said, I say be guided by the Spirit, and you won't carry out your selfish desires. A person's selfish desires are set against the Spirit, and the Spirit is set against one's selfish desires. They are opposed to each other. So you shouldn't do whatever you want. But if you are being led by the Spirit, you aren't under the law. The actions that are produced by selfish motives are obvious, since they include sexual immorality, moral corruption, doing whatever feels good, idolatry, drug use, and casting spells, hate, fighting, obsession, losing your temper, competitive opposition, conflict, selfishness, group rivalry, jealousy, drunkenness, partying, and other things like that. I warn you, as I have already warned you, that those who do these kinds of things won't inherit God's kingdom. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against things like these. Those who law belong to Christ have crucified self with its passions and its desires. If we live by the Spirit, then... Let's follow the Spirit. Our devotion writer is Andrea Warnick from Connecticut, and she picked uh, Galatians 5, 22 and 23 as her focus verse. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Uh, and, and here's her devotion. On a recent trip to the garden center, I was hoping to select a flowering plant that would continue to produce beautiful blossoms throughout the entire summer. The clerk told me to be sure to pick off the faded blooms. That way, the plant's energy would go into producing new flowers. I began to think about my own life. Do I spend my time and energy projecting God's beauty in the world, or is my energy being wasted on things that aren't living or aren't life-giving? Do I harbor feelings of anger, jealousy, or resentment toward anyone? Do I waste my energy feeding my fears and doubts? When I began to take an inventory of my thoughts and feelings and how I spend my time, I came to realize that my negative thoughts are using energy that could be used to allow God's light to shine through me. I followed the clerk's advice, and my plant produced beautiful blossoms throughout the summer. Each time I picked off the faded blooms, I prayed for the wisdom and guidance to use my energy to produce beauty in the world through kindness, joy, and love. Her thought for the day is, what, what, what everyday tasks can teach me the ways of God? I think about this, you know, from the, the aspect, too, of the, of the beauty of that and, and being able to think about what is dead within me that should be plucked away. What is not life-giving within me that should be trimmed or pruned, as, as the scripture says? Jesus used that in the analogy of the vine as well. There are things that should be pruned away from us. I would say that, that um, each and every one of us might want to do that kind of assessment. So what are the things that are in our lives? You know, Paul gives this really, really long list, right? You know, the, the selfish motives 
uh, um, immorality, moral corruption, doing what feels good, idolatry, casting spells. I mean, he's got a really long list. And he says there are laws that, that keep us, that, that, that say that we're supposed to not do these things. We are warned not to do these things. But then he turns around and he says, if these things are gone, that makes room for the spirit to be able to work. And the spirit to be able to produce within us love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Because in these things, there's no law against any of them. There's a law of promoting and goodness that could come out. So as you think about your, your own life, you know, as I'm trying to do as well, especially during this pandemic, you know, how much of my time and my energy am I focused on things that are not life-giving or things that do not provide the space for the spirit to be able to produce within me the fruits of that spirit. What needs to be plucked away from my life? What are the dead things that are sucking up time and energy? Things like anxiety, stress, things like pondering, you know, uh, what the future may hold when, when none of us really know. You know, all the, you know, worried about what people might say or think about this or that, you know, all of these kinds of negative things suck up energy and they take away the life giving thing. So what is it for you that's kind of sucking up your energy that could be negative? And what is it that could be growing within you that could suck up all your energy that could be positive in the world around us? I want you to take a moment to pause and think about that. As we take an opportunity just to pause and take a moment to pray together. Gracious and loving God, help us to learn from all of your creation how to spread the gospel of peace, joy, and love. Prune within us, pluck off the dead that sucks up our energy so that through your spirit we might live into the life-giving things that you desire for us, that we might produce beauty in the world through kindness, joy, and love. And we know in this world that is needed. And we pray this in Christ. Amen. Thanks, everybody, for taking the opportunity to join me today. I appreciate it. A little bit shorter on our devotion time, but still, I'm glad that we had this moment together. Look forward to seeing you in worship tomorrow at 1045. Don't forget. We'll be online a few minutes early just so that we can make sure to make it to all of our venues. But come and join us for worship tomorrow. I hope you have a great rest of your Saturday afternoon. Looks like a beautiful day outside. I'm going to go enjoy some of it. But until then, look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And God's peace and grace be with you. Have a great day.